everybody's happy hour. It is. What are you drinking? Wow, we're getting right into it. <laughs> uh, I want to take another hit off of my pen. You want me to have something to talk about? Yes. Okay. Uh, tonight's poor choice uh, is another one I might regret by the end of this. It is called a gin squirt. I picked it because it has a silly name. Um, what are you talking about? Gin squirt. Explain. What's the silly name? Uh, it's just a silly sounding word. Oh. It's also pretty summery. Ah. Uh. Like a squirt gun. But we're definitely knee deep in the fall right now. We are. So let's check this out. The, the gin squirt is a sweet drink. It is a tall drink, and it is filled with ice, and it is a very delicate pink color. Uh, let me go ahead and tell you these ingredients after Birdie gives It smells like you. sugar. Yeah. Get ready, because there's sugar in it. Ingredient number one. One and a half ounces of dry gin. One tablespoon of powdered sugar. One teaspoon of raspberry syrup or grenadine. Mine's the grenadine. Stir with ice, strain into a highball glass over new ice, fill with carbonated water and stir. Decorate with cubes of pineapple and whole strawberries. You don't have those. I'm sorry. I do that every time. Oh. I don't know what you're talking about. There are pineapples and strawberry all, all over, over my drink. All over that glass. I don't know what they're talking about. Okay. So... If you had those in there, though, it would throw off what I'm about to say. So okay. I'm glad that they aren't in there. This is the perfect drink to introduce somebody to gin. Oh, you think? Because if you're tasting it, you don't get the like super bitterness that you can get with gin sometimes. If you like, if it's just by itself, hmm. it kind of has that like amazing. I wouldn't call it bitter. It's more like herbal to me. Ugh. I guess some herbs can be bitter. But you but. can taste that still in that, but it's not got that bitter like end, I For guess. Sure. Because it has all the sugar in it. Yeah. But it's not like, like I would drink that. It's fizzy. and Would you? I think so. I but I only had sure. the very tiniest sip Yeah. because it's so much sugar. It's gin. It's, a it's lot. almost nine o'clock. Yeah. I've got to go to bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good. I wouldn't make this the gin drink I introduce someone to, though. Like, that still for me is the Tom Collins. Mm. It's my first and favorite gin drink, I think. It's a good one. Because it's also sweet and it's very lemon. It's like lemonade with booze in lemonade it. Lemonade with booze. Yeah. yeah. Very good. I'm just saying, like, for being able to taste the floral notes of gin, yeah. this is a great drink for that. All right. I'll take it. It might be completely ruined if you put fruit in it. Gin squirt. Well, it's just a garnish. You can put the fruit in it or take it off and eat it whole. Sure, sure. But I'm just saying it would probably change the flavor of being able to taste the gin. Sure. So that's what I'm drinking. Uh, hold on. I think I might have had a write-up to read to you all. Uh, mix that drink. Says the gin squirt cocktail is very simple. Just gin, grenadine, carbonated water, and some sugar to make it even sweeter. Amen. The, uh, the flavor is pretty fabulous if you like a sweet cocktail, but what really sells this one, in my humble opinion, is the garnish. And then there's just a picture with a gigantic piece of pineapple and strawberry on the cup. Um, is it as big as the cup? Pert near. Yep. Thought it was wide. Um, yeah, so they like this sweet cup of drink. There's just something about getting chunks of fruit with a cocktail. It brings a new texture to the drink. You can dip the fruit. You can let it soak up some of the cocktail if you like. It's just fun. See, that's what I'm saying. It changes the flavor. Yeah. Uh, thanks, MixThatDrink.com, for your write-up and opinion. I disagree a little. I feel like, especially with pineapple, I would totally put pineapple. Like, if pineapple came on the side of a drink, mm -hmm. I'm putting that in there. I'm not going to eat it. For sure. Actually, I think I would put a little pineapple juice in this to mix yeah. it a little bit. Right now, this drink is just very one note for me. It is just sweet. Right. I think if you threw some pineapple or maybe some citrus juice, it would definitely help kind of round it out. Mm. That's me pretending to know anything about mixology. 
But I know some things. You know some, some things. You've like done a lot of research. Acid would help. So that's the gin squirt. I'm curious what you're smoking tonight. I am smoking wedding cake tonight. Ooh. Yes, which we have smoked before. So mm-hmm. not on the show, but it is a strain that you and I have partaken in before. Yeah, we've done the flower before, and you've yes. got the... Uh, I have the cartridge, the baby cartridge. Oh, my God. <clears throat> which is why I'm coughing, mm-hmm. because I don't normally smoke this much on it. Getting nice and high. Uh, so wedding cake is also known as triangle mince number 23. <laughs> Leafly. Leafly. A lot of Leafly.com. Um, it's a potent indica hybrid marijuana strain made by crossing triangle kush with animal mints, hence the name. Uh, wedding cake provides relaxing, euphoric effects that calm the body and mind. This strain features a rich and tangy flavor profile with undertones of earthy pepper. I got that. Medical marijuana patients choosing wedding cake. Oh, choose wedding cake to help relieve symptoms associated with pain, insomnia, and appetite loss. Guess what? I suffer from three of those. All of them. All three. Um, It has a high THC content, so people with low THC tolerance should be careful. Oh, yeah. They told us that when we got the... uh... The pre-roll. They're like, it's very strong. We read uh, that. Okay. Wedding cake has soared in popularity over the years and was named Leafly Strain of the Year in 2019. That's f- fun. Fun fact, in Canada, the strain is known as Pink Cookies. I'm going to tap that. Pink Cookies. Pink Cookies. Look at that. Also known as Wedding Cake is the familiar... Genetic cross between Girl Scout cookies and cherry pie. Hey, Interesting. What? That is not the same things that they this just said over there. Treat is rich and are tangy all of these things earth and pepper? Are they really all just the same? It's names? all a lie. It's a tangled web. Yeah, it really is. That they have weaved. Taking notes and dimensions from its OG and turban. I feel like parentage. they did this, and then they are gonna give like all the paperwork to like the FBI or whatever that they have to. Oh yeah. Report, report to, and they're gonna be like, "Here you go, ha <laughs> ha, fuck you." Yeah, the cross referencing <laughs> is. It's just Killer. ridiculous. Well, this was supposed to be OG and, 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 and. The Girl Scout cookie. <laughs> number 23. Number four. Oh. GGKG. I think that's another strain, actually, that yeah. I have upstairs. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyways, yeah, so that's what I'm uh, smoking tonight. These are the poor choices we have made. Mm, they, mine is delicious. Mine's all right. Uh, quick tease. If you're here for the advice, the question we're answering later on yeah, yeah. comes from Claire. She asks, how do you motivate yourself to work out? Bum, bum, bum. Take that. We're not answering it yet. Can you believe it? Stick around. Booyah. Find out what we're going to say. But first, let's talk highs and lows. Let's do that. Did you write who goes first today? You go first today, but you did go f- first already earlier. So if you want me to go first now, I can. I know you say that every time. And I know that like I I personally, I actually really don't care either. I, I know either. But it's good to just have a system down so that we don't do this every week because right. we're Libras. Yeah. No, and that's neither why I one of us is going to. Exactly. So it's you. But then you gave me an out. You're like. I'm sorry. I gave you an option. Yeah. I gave you a choice because I wanted you to have balance. Yeah, something like that. Um, All right, <clears throat> this is our life. We ask a lot of, what would you rather do? Shink. It's your turn. Stop reading mine. I'm not reading yours. Your, my notes are literally on top of yours. I know, but your chicken scratch is really hard for me to read. Like, there's no way that I could, like, I cannot decipher that from looking down at it. But, like, mine is very big and bold and, like, beautiful i'm not and you could totally understand what that says but it's upside down and i'm not i don't care to read Side it because you're gonna tell me in just like th- four minutes okay i just want to make sure all right makes me self-conscious i'm just gonna cover it up with my notebook now you're so sweet uh this helps me more than it helps you because now it's at eye level ish it's, it's more like chest level <laughs> my low this week my low this week my low this week, 
I had some really terrible headaches. You woke up with one. Yeah, at like 3 a.m., just a, a real smasher. Kept mm-hmm. me up for a couple hours. Took some pain medicine. Um, rolled around uncomfortably, squeezing my temples. Yeah. I went and got you a rice sock, a cold you one. did. It was really hard to put on my face because it was very cold. It was very cold. But... I'm not sure it was. It did anything for me either, but mm. it was worth a shot, and I appreciate you for doing that. There's not really anything more to say about it. The I headache got you medicine too. I like when you woke oh, up because you were just like, uh, like rolling around next to me. Which, oh my god, where do our children get it from? It's goddamn you. Instead of like getting up and doing something about it yourself, you rolled around. <laughs> No, I'm just lying. You you got up and got your own medicine. Yeah. But you needed water because I had to get up and pee because it was the middle of the night and that's what I do. Yeah, you're up. You might as well empty the tank. That's what you have. What happens when you have babies? I do it. I think that's what happens when you're an adult. If you wake up in the middle of the night, you're going to pee. Oh, yeah. I don't okay. know. Audience, are we wrong? Do you wake up and pee? Are you Tell adults? <laughs> I sure hope you are. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so there's really not much to say more about that. Um, headaches suck. It wasn't a migraine. I know some mm-hmm. of you might be thinking, oh, I wonder if it was a migraine. It wasn't a migraine. Mm-hmm. hurt everywhere, right behind the eyes. Who knows? You didn't ever Googled it. No, I don't Google things because I'm not, I'm just not that kind of person. I don't want to freak myself into thinking I have some sort of brain cancer. I'm going to do it for myself right now. You're going to freak yourself out into thinking I have brain cancer? Mm-hmm. All right. While you do that, I'm going to think positive thoughts and talk about my highs for the week. Uh, so it's a two-parter, and they're completely unrelated. The first one is I don't have psoriasis. You may remember a couple weeks ago I talked about a gross hand wound, and uh, I it think is it was last week. That was two episodes ago. Mm. But yeah, so my my biopsy was painful and gross. It's it's healing now. I still have the the rash or whatever, but biopsy results came back. It is not psoriasis. They're like, yeah, man, it's just eczema. Dish up, dish. There's a word for it. I can't remember it off the top of my head. Dishydrosis or something like that. Oh yeah. It's a ridiculously long, crazy word. And they could just say eczema, Yeah, which is already a crazy word. So yeah, that's, I guess it's good news, but it's also like, I got to go back to the doctor to see what the hell else it might be. And like how to treat it because the previous course of action has not been successful. Um, And then uh, much less cool news, but still a high. I got a a new sweater and it's super cozy and it looks great under denim. It looks so good. I love layering sweaters under denim, hooded sweatshirts, and it's got like a, a wool kind of lining to it. You also got a haircut this week. I did. And a new sweater. Yeah. And I had to tell you not to roll your pants up to show your ankles because that is, holy hell, so hot. (sighs) Because you were looking so fine. (laughs) What was that? That was a cat. Oh. No. There's no cats down here. It was a tiger. Oh. Are we. Are you the Tiger King? Well, I can say that I will never financially recover from this. <laughs> uh, he had some good lines. Weird he, guy. Oh my god, weird guy! I get ads for Big Cat Rescue sometimes on Facebook. That's fun. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I definitely think she killed her husband. For those of you wondering. Sure. Um. That was, those were your highs and your lows. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. Pretty, you said it. Pretty short and easy today. Yeah. What do you got? What are your what are you happy and sad about? So my low and my high both happened today. Wow. I know, right? Um that I'm might be because my like memory is so short and like I can't remember anything right now. That it's really I hard for me to remember back. Carry this giant notebook around. I have, to re- I have to carry it around all the time and write down things that happen in it. Am I too close? No. Okay, perfect. Um, I got shit on my shoe. Oh. Uh. Oh, but it's also tied to my other, like the other low that I wrote down. <laughs> so I like 
It's not even my shoe. It's my house shoe. Yeah, the one you wear around all the time. Because I am an old woman. We are old, old people. The problem is you wear your house shoe outside. It was in our own yard. Okay, there's dog shit out there. Despite Um, it being cleaned up, quote unquote, recently. They never finished. I asked them if they finished. I didn't pay them for it. Oh, good. Anyways, so the uh, older kids got into spray paint that was in our garage and spray painted the back fence behind the trampoline. And so when they came in to wash their hands and said, it won't come off. And I heard them from the other room. I had Drew go in and check and see what it was. Spray paint. They had spray paint on their hands and face. Anyways. So Our walking oldest. walking out there. Yeah. They're not, I don't even think. It, no, it was. It was walking out there because I like slipped. And I was like, oh man, I think I just stepped in dog shit. And I like looked at the bottom of my shoe and it was fine where I had slipped, which was like on the back of my heel. Mm. And then as I was putting my foot down, my toes kind of like I saw the tip of them. And there was dog shit up there. And I was like, how, what the? On the foot toe or the toe of your sandal? No, like it's the toe of my um, clog. Got it. Oh. It was the clog. Oh. Uh, so they're on the. The suede. I know. Well, it's not the suede part. It's the. Cork. Foam. Bottom sole part. You got shit on your rubber. shoe. Rubber. And our kids spray painted the fence. Yeah. So those yeah. were my lows. Those are shitty parts. Happened today. Um, but something happened that made it better. Yes. We went on a walk mm-hmm. slash picnic thing. We didn't eat anything, but well, like you and I took a picnic blanket. And we sat down for more and than five minutes. we did that. Yeah. And we took the kids to the playground at the school and they played. And I asked them if they would leave us alone. And they said yes. And they did. They left us alone and they played and played. It was wonderful. But... Not only that, it was just like a wonderful evening, you know, spending time with you. But that fucking moon. Oh. Mm -hmm. It was so good. Mm. It was a very beautiful moon. I wanted to take a picture of it. Did you not take any? No, because there were the like street lights on Pennsylvania that you could see and they were like just as bright as the moon yeah. at that far away. So they didn't look great on my on my iPhone. Okay. How do you take pictures of the moon on an iPhone? Can somebody tell me that? Yeah, I would love to can. know. Listeners, if you know how to take lunar photography with a smart device. Oh, wait. One of our friend's friends. Uh, we were at... I don't want to say the name out loud. Okay. Do you remember? Uh, he had that like telescope device that clipped to the phone oh, yes. and he was taking all sorts of interesting lunar photography. That is right. So it's just, uh, attachments and stuff. <clears throat> yeah. So, Hey listeners, I know we asked you to give us some answers and we kind of answered it ourselves. If you have any other methods for lunar photography, let us know. Cause Bertie will consider it. Yeah. Sure will. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and that's it. Those are my highs and my lows today. I gotta tell you, I thought for sure you were going to say your high was tricking the kids into thinking we heard a werewolf. No, because it ended badly. They thought that I was a terrible, terrible person. Yeah. Come up, come on up next. We get to answer that question from Claire about working out. Oh, yeah. Stick around. Yeah. Stick around. Yeah. Stick around. All right. Welcome back. Hi. Are you ready to get pumped up? Are you Hans Solo and Franz? We are here to pump you up. <laughs> you, you are crazy. You <laughs> you were sheltered in the nineties, <laughs> and you didn't get to watch SNL reruns <laughs> like I did on Comedy Central. No, I didn't. Yeah, Hans and Franz. My dad great... probably knows exactly what you're talking about. Oh, for sure. And if your dad is listening, hey there, get pumped up. We're talking about Saturday Night Live from the 80s and 90s. hey Yeah, it was good. All those reruns, I miss them. Mm. Classic SNL with, uh, um, oh, you know, the, the greats like Chris Kattan, Will Ferrell, Kevin Nealand. Ugh, I miss those guys. Excuse me. 
I totally burped. Oh, I couldn't right. covered it up talking about 90s stuff. All right, all right. Talking about 90s stuff because... Exercise. This week's question has to do with exercise. Yeah. We're cool. gonna get physical, physical. I'm not. I'm sorry. It, I just like, I always am so scared that I'm not gonna come out on key. That I have so much... We're Stage gonna fright. get physical around that was, singing. That was Birdie. <clears throat> yes. Uh, so our question comes from Claire, friend of the show. Hi, Claire. Hi, Claire. Hi, Claire. How are you? Good. Thanks Good. for asking. No, I'm not. I know that I'm looking at you. No, no, no. Claire was talking back to us. I was just answering her You're question. You're so weird. No. Offense. Where? How, how do you, how are you talking to Claire right now? Sorry, I picked a bad time to yawn. Um, you know how sometimes people will ask audiences rhetorical questions and then give a second for that person to answer and then they answer back? No. It's like, uh, what was that movie? Sorry, Claire, we'll, we'll be with you in just a second. Um... <laughs> Oh, onward! He has that ta- the the tape recording of his dad, and he pretends to have a conversation with his dad's recording. Remember? Oh yeah. That's what I'm doing for Claire. I'm not her dad. I know her dad. Cool dude. Okay. Uh, hey Claire's dad. Oh right, but it would need to be me for all of that to work. You? Why you? Like it's it's me having a conversation with myself, being both of the people. No, we were having a conversation with Claire. Right, but it was weird because it's you would have to be both people. No. <clears throat> I'm just the pause. I'm the dad on the tape. Oh, my goodness. I can't. Right, we're ready to move on, I think. We are. Claire asks, go ahead. How do you motivate? Motivate. Wow. Okay, can we? I'm so sorry. <laughs> can you edit that out? Probably. You don't edit any of this out, do you? Sometimes I do. Go ahead. What's the and question? You, uh, I'm going to start listening to the shows. You don't listen to the show? How do you motivate yourself to work out? Go look at it. Go look at it. It's loud. Oh, it was loud. I told you. I actually didn't say anything. It's time to work out. No, you told me with your face. <laughs> Whoa. So for those of you that ripped your headphones off just a second ago, the question is, how do you motivate yourself to work out? Thank you for the question, Claire. You get to answer first. Tell me first? Okay, cool. Uh, So to be real and honest and 100% authentic, I don't currently have an exercise routine. I have... In the past. What? Yeah, I know. Uh, well. How? What do you do? No, I'm kidding. You don't go anywhere. I don't. I stay in high. I say, I st- I'm an inside kid right now. What do you do at 10 o'clock at night? Video games. And the podcast. And the podcast. Yeah. Here we are. Here we are. Ta-da! But you know what? I have exercised in the past. And I've had good routines in the past. Healthy routines in the past. I've done things. Right? So, let's... Me too. Yeah. Also, currently, I think... I don't want to spoil anything, but Birdie also doesn't have a routine currently. Except... I am trying to lift... Lift. Um, Do like a little circuit um, for my arms. Starting... Actually, today. I started today. Oh, cool. And um, going until my photo shoot in November. What a great idea. Which is almost a month away. It's on the 18th. I will not scoop that because I feel like that's a good kernel to pop oh. <laughs> with Claire later. Uh, but since I have to go first, right? Yeah. My advice, Claire, what's always worked for me when I've had the most success working out, I have had a buddy. Oh, my God. 
Do you have the same advice? I don't know if I responded way too soon <clears throat> and knocked into the microphone. Yes, it's my second second one, buddy second system. Idea? Okay, well, my first idea is buddy system. So let me give you a little history lesson. I worked out in college. Yeah, Bertie's Bernie, got a good grin on her face. <laughs> I sent her some cute six-pack pictures back in the day. Oh. Can we go through the old photos, please, faster than you are? Because they in there, and I want to see them. I used to have abs and a hairline. Can you believe it? Oh. I can. I have photographic evidence. Your yeah. arms were nice, too. Were. No, oh, they're so good right now. Good save. Good save. <laughs> um, I don't know. what. Oh. I just said earlier, right? Because you had the haircut and you had the new sweater. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure when you took the sweater off, I then told you that your tattoos made you really hot too. So Today? No, when you had your haircut. Oh, I don't remember the tattoo comment. Well. Well, I appreciate it though. So yeah, Claire, back in college, I, I worked out with your friend and mine, Andrew P., I won't say his last name. I'll check with him to make sure I can say his first name and initial. Sure, sure. Uh, but he was a great, he was very knowledgeable. He lifted quite a bit, uh, like just for fun. Like he did that on his own and mm -hmm. probably with other people. Um, Learned. So yeah, he was a very like knowledgeable person to help me figure out like what I should do to do, like what, what should I do today and what should I do tomorrow and how should I take breaks? And he taught me a lot about, you know, the leg day versus arm day versus back day and all the stuff you would do any day and like right. cardio and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so that was super helpful and beneficial for me back in that those days. Do you remember that information? Has it Mildly. retained? Like I think I know enough to like say, okay, today I'm going to do the upper body and tomorrow I'm going to do the lower body. Sure. And all the days do a couple miles on the treadmill. Yeah. If I were to go to a gym. Yeah. Um, and then I stopped exercising for several years <laughs> until I have found another Why? buddy. Uh, Seth, who asked a question a few weeks ago, Loud yes. Dogs. Seth and I used to work out, wake up at the butt crack of dawn to go to the uh, name brand fitness club in the Cortland Center Cortland Mall. Cortland Center Mall. Yeah. Oh, my in God, Flint. yeah. Well, um, now you said where it's at, you can say the name brand and you know, whatever. Let's just say Meh. they don't put up with bullies. <laughs> or what is it? I don't know whatever judgment keep going they don't deal with judgment very well uh yeah so he was my buddy and he was very knowledgeable and helped you know it's always good to have somebody spot you somebody to run next to and just say okay because you got that person that's literally next to you you're like well if they're still going i can still go well and also it's though when i was writing down buddy system i thought of seth and you mm -hmm. because you guys got up at the butt crack of dawn you were both working like regular nine to five jobs mm -hmm. and like, no, he was working even earlier. Remember? That's why you had to get up. Yeah. We were up at like, <clears throat> I think five? I got up at four 30 to be there at five or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and it would, you, you had to keep each other accountable. Like right. you, I don't know, were you each other's brides ever? No. Cause he was living in Flushing. Yeah, he the place with the loud dog. He's no longer there. But yeah, he was driving up from there. We would meet out there. Okay. I think sometimes he might pick me up. I don't remember. Either I'm way. I'm just curious. Yeah. Yeah, because like you're kind of on the way if he took a back different road. Yeah. Um, but that you have that accountability like, ooh, he's going to be waiting in my driveway. Or yep. like I can remember that when I was training um, oh my for God. my marathon. Yeah, that just totally reminded me when the buddy system failed. I was supposed to have a buddy for the marathon. Yes, and that was a really big bummer. Yeah, they backed out. So it was like a, a mental blow very early in the day, and then I had to run 26 miles. Was it a mental? Wait, no, no, no. I'm sorry. They didn't back out. They did not back out of the race. No, they still ran, but they were not. They ran, and they booked it. No, I never saw them. They were way faster, right? I never saw them. But yeah, they did finish before me. Oh, you never, you guys didn't even find each other. No. Oh, goddamn. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so that, so when the buddy system fails, it can be a huge blow to motivation. 
Yes. So definitely find someone you know, love, and trust to keep you on your toes. Had you contacted them? <laughs> we don't need to problem solve this. Yes, I texted, and, and they said, uh, sorry, we were having trouble parking. Oh. And they just they just went to a different heat. They didn't even bother to try. Mm. It's my beard. Anyway, I don't know if this is going to make it in the cut because I'm it's just sad. I'm sorry. Um, you yeah. did that, though. I did. You ran a freaking marathon, 26.2 miles. But that training process, too, was... Uh, I did a lot of that on my own, but we did a lot of so, uh, partnered stuff. You would run with me sometimes, yes. and we had the running group once a week. Yep. So, yeah. Strength in numbers, Claire. That's my advice. Um... Also, don't break your toe because that's what happened. That's why I was not your buddy. Yeah. And we did not run our marathons together. Accurate. But we did get to cheer each other on. We did. I think it worked out rather nicely because I either one of us had the child. Mm-hmm. Children. Multiple. Childs. So, yeah, that's... That's all the advice I have for Claire. I don't have a number one or a two. It's just buddy system. And, uh, you know, if that buddy happens to know a lot about the exercises you're trying to do, bonus points. Yeah. So find find that friend that fucking loves exercising <laughs> and figure out a way to make their schedule work for you. Or find somebody that also wants to start exercising. Yeah. And learn together YouTube. That's part. That's part of one of my... Actually, well, the dumbbells and YouTube is my uh, one of my other like suggestions. My advice is a specific workout routine. No, just uh, just dumbbells and YouTube. Oh, just, just if like, you have them, like that's how you can motivate yourself. Start with something accessible. Yes, buy yourself some dumbbells. They're not super expensive. Yeah, they're not. Buy some of them. Honestly, like if you haven't done it before, I have three pounds. No shame. <laughs> I bought them for you. Uh, because I, I and I also have two pounds because when you're doing like long sets, having those smaller is way you have to because I cannot do that with a five or an eight, which I also have. Um, And YouTube or Pinterest, like you can find so many routines. So that is one of my suggestions. Um, my, my silly suggestion is to give yourself food breaks <laughs> or rewards while you're working out. So kind Men's of like, workout. it's kind of like the donkey with the carrot in the cart and you're trying to get the donkey to move forward to get the carrot to move the cart. And so you get the stick. Yeah. That's like you, you place your food like in front of you and motivate like okay if i finish five minutes then i can have that yeah chocolate chip whatever oh right or maybe it's not even food maybe it's like a like whatever i can scroll instagram for 15 minutes yeah you get to that's just me that was me that was not i'm not yeah or you run run a mile watch an episode of dexter yeah whatever (laughs) why are you watching dexter because that's what we, we just talked about it not on the show. No, in real life. This isn't real life. This is a podcast. We're not actually next to you in your ear. Whoa. This is recorded digital media. Um. Yes, so food breaks or re- rewards. That was my silly one because I used to do that for myself Um. when I was in like first or second grade. And I had math homework and I hated math. I would set a gummy bear on each of my math problems in my workbook. And as I completed them, I could eat the gummy bear. That's a lot of self-control for yourself. Because I would have been like, plop, plop, plop. Well, I'm going to finish this in a minute. I'll just take it now. (laughs) That's not the, like... No, I know. (sighs) Self-control is an issue. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) I'm saying you have it. I wouldn't have. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I needed that system. Otherwise, I would have been like playing. And I knew that I had to like put that there to keep myself mm-hmm. on track to do those. Yeah. Um, I got in trouble enough times as a young child at a Christian school. 
<laughs> but I was like, not going to do that. Um, dun, 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 dun. Walking. Mm-hmm. It's a great place to start. Don't need to buy anything at all. Nope. And if you, well, if you, a good pair of running shoes is, or a good pair of walking shoes. Yeah. But I've also I heard would, that the best shoes you have are the ones you have. Or the best shoes to use are the ones you have. I don't know. I will say, with the way that my hips feel right now, having a good pair of shoes is everything if you start running. You, For sure. you have to have a pair of running shoes. Go get fitted. Don't. Don't not. Don't not do it. It's bad. You fall apart. But walking, yeah. Uh, Yeah, walking is, in, especially if you are home from work still or like working from home, mm-hmm. if you have like a chance, hey, guess what? I have a 10 minute break. Oh my God. Go outside and walk. Guess who your buddy is? A dog. Get a dog. Yes. And then you walk with a dog. Claire has a dog. <gasps> I think. I think so. Pretty sure. I bet that dog likes to walk. She's going to message us and be like, my dog hates to walk. Terrible buddy. She has a built-in buddy. All right. Are we out of advice? I think that's all my advice. Get a dog. Also, buddy system. I, I will be your buddy. We can virtually work out together. Oh, yeah. That's an interesting idea. We can If Zoom. you go on like a... If you're just like, we'll go on a Zoom date. Yeah, or just walking. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, Just walking around the neighborhood. You get somebody on your Bluetooth headset or whatever. You get a nice phone phone call. Phone date. Walk. Boom. It's perfect. I see myself doing a phone date walk and just getting winded immediately. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm still here. (gasps) You have to slow down at that point. Yeah. That's a thing. Running, training for the marathons, like... With the buddy system, when I did have someone to run next to, like, I could never talk to them. I was... Uh, no. It was never... And um, so the person that I trained with for the marathon, I ha- haven't checked if I can say their name. But we talked about that. We were like, we don't have to talk. We're not talkers. <laughs> this, is, this is not about talking. Well, because we were also training at 6 o'clock on, like, Saturday mornings. Mm-hmm. When I'm like, I want to be asleep. Or sometimes, I think some of them were five. Because it was our long runs. And it just needed to be done together. There was no way those long ones were going to get done without each other. Which is like, and we have said multiple times to one another, there's no way that I would have finished that race without her. Mm. Like, there's no way. Because, like, we we also, like, we trained together, we rode down together, we, like, got our hotel together, stayed together in our room, and then, like, ran the race together. And then it was like, okay, now separate families. And, like, she got to go get a massage the next day. I was like, you bastard. But also, so smart. Yeah. So. There's another one. Another reward. Get a massage if you run a marathon yes if you get a marathon book yourself a massage yeah i have my half marathon like that i'll be able to do next year once this hip pain is settled right and you better bet the next day i'm getting a full fucking body massage it's gonna be so good that reminds me you were saying yeah (laughs) oh yeah Face. I'm doing a little dance. Yeah, there's a dance here. <laughs> Something you said earlier when when I was just uh, giving my advice. Yeah. You were talking. I don't remember what it triggered. Anyway, if you can somehow like financially lock yourself into something like a oh, race, yes. like nothing gets you more vo- motivated to run a race, whether it's a 5K or a 10K or a marathon, than like putting money down and say, I'm going to run this race. I'm going to run that. Yeah. I did. So you do have the option if you have like injuries. Yeah. Like I have had this year. You can defer it. To defer. There is like a fee. Well, and there's a fee too. Like I still had to pay a fee to defer. So that also is like a, you don't want to just say, oh, I didn't train because then you're paying more money. Yeah. (laughs) To defer to next year. And it's like, oh, is it worth it? Yeah. But that is super motivating. Yes. So it's like a, a goal 
it's got a time it's it's a smart goal essentially it's specific it's a 5k or whatever yeah or like a weightlifting competition or any kind of athletic Ugh. stuff i'm sure there's some competition you can join and well, put yourself into yes and honestly like if you can martial arts is a great one to get into oh yeah i loved that if you can get a get it again into a good school um i because then you're you have the consistency of t- testing for your belts yeah Always so every few months you know i think it was like every three months we were testing for our belts in the beginning and then as you get higher up takes longer. it's longer between each one but like you're getting all of this knowledge um and you know you're training at like much higher levels yeah being a badass yeah so, so that's the advice be a badass be, a, be the badass you know that you are get a buddy put some money on it buy some good shoes maybe a dumbbell or two I hope that helped. Claire and anybody else out there that's looking for motivation, including myself. Uh, Hmm. Maybe someday. Dreamily. Well, we love you. (laughs) Uh, If you like the show, why don't you go follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and if you really like us. Hey, hey. Throw a review on that iTunes. Let us know what you do and don't like. We accept criticism as well. We do, we do. We will cry, but you know, <laughs> that's on you at that point. I'll just buy some Reese's. Mm-hmm. All right. No need to drag it out. Nope. Goodbye. Goodbye. I love you. Uh, oh, I didn't say it with you. One, two, three. I, I love, love you. you. Poor Advice is created and recorded by Drew and Bertie Smith, and I do all the editing. If you need some advice, submit your question to bit.ly slash helpmepouradvice or record a message at anchor.fm slash pouradvice. If your question gets answered on the show, we'll send you some free stuff. You can also get social with us. Follow the show on Facebook and Instagram at pouradviceshow. Follow Birdie on Instagram at putbirdieonit. And follow Drew on Instagram and Twitter at the normal name. If you like the show, please rate us on iTunes. It really helps. Thanks for listening to Poor Advice Happy Hour. I I love love you. you.